Good morning. My name is Emily Seal, and I'm one of the fourth year PMNR residents here at IU. I will be presenting on this topic, the effects of acute inpatient rehab on cognitive outcomes following COVID-19 infection. This is a project I completed with much help from Megan Willoughby and Dr. Kyle Littell. So in regards to disclosures, I have none. And in keeping with the recommended format, I'll be following this outline for my presentation. So even after two years into this pandemic, research is still ongoing and new information is being published on a fairly regular basis but it has increasingly focused on the more long-term consequences of COVID as well as how to best manage these issues. So cognitive dysfunction is now a pretty well-established complication associated with COVID. As many patients recovering from acute infection do experience some degree of cognitive deficits. And we're even seeing this in cases of mild illness. Now, some of the cognitive domains that are found to be affected are delayed processing speed, verbal recall, difficulties with sustained attention, as well as abstraction. And these impairments, which range from mild to severe, can persist for weeks to even months after the initial onset of illness. And so far, uh, we've learned that this management can be challenging. So not surprising, given the potential for so many complications, uh, functional impairments have also been reported in these patients. So particularly following a case of severe COVID, some patients may require an inpatient rehab stay to address this decline in their prior level of function. And these rehab needs can be frequently, frequently are complex. Um, often we're seeing patients with impairments in not just mobility and ability to perform ADLs, but also their respiratory function, their cognition, their communication skills, um, swallow issues and um, nutritional needs that all have to be addressed for a complete recovery. So it's for that reason that rehabbing these patients can be a bit of a challenge and data is still limited on the effectiveness of our, our interventions on these functional outcomes in this particular population. So there have been some promising studies so far, uh, studies that have reported improvements in functional outcomes following acute rehab, uh, looking at objective measurements of mobility like sit to stand efficiency, muscle strength, and FIMP scores. Also looking at independence with ADLs and assessments of cognitive functioning via MOCA and mini mental status scores. Now to my knowledge at the time of researching for and writing this paper, there have not yet been any studies that specifically look at cognitive functional outcomes following this type of structured intensive inpatient rehab program like you would see here at RHI. So that brings me to our objective. And the objective of this study was to analyze the effectiveness of acute inpatient rehab on cognitive functioning via the use of cognitive FIM scores in patients recovering from acute COVID infection. So how did we accomplish this objective? So we completed a retrospective chart review we started with a list of all patients admitted to RHI between March 2020 and May of 2021 who had recently tested positive for COVID-19. A total of 133 patients met this inclusion criteria and therefore were included in our review. The exclusion criteria included two main points, so either a history of premorbid neurocognitive impairment 
like um, with dementia or developmental disability, or a current or past diagnosis with the potential to cause cognitive impairment, such as a stroke or a traumatic brain injury. Now, it should be noted that we did not exclude patients who had experienced um, encephalopathy or delirium at any time during their hospitalization. They were included in our study. So for patients who met this criteria, we looked at a few demographics, uh, age, gender, medical comorbidities, as well as their duration of stay in acute rehab and their discharge disposition. So the majority of patients in the study were male and the mean age was 62 years old. So in addition to demographics, we looked at um, admission cognitive FIM scores, uh, the total cognitive score and each individual subcategory and the discharge cognitive FIM scores. And then with these numbers, we calculated the following two metrics. So the FIM change score, which you calculate just from subtracting the admission FIM score from the discharge FIM score shows you um, whether the magnitude of the improvement in FIM score over the course of their stay. Then we also looked at FIM efficiency scores, which is calculated by dividing um, this FIM change score by each patient's duration of stay. And um, so most of us are familiar with FIM scores, so I won't go into too much detail. But I do want to just lay out some of the basics so we're all on the same page um, as far as when I'm referencing FIM scores. Um, I'll just say either FIM score or cognitive FIM score. Um, so we, we commonly use FIM scores in the rehab setting to assess a patient's functional level prior to, during, and at the end of an acute rehab program. And these scores really help give us a uniform and reproducible system to measure the level of assistance that a patient requires to mobilize and to carry out his or her activities of daily living. And these measurements, they, they help the therapy team in setting a patient's goals, but also in evaluating a patient's functional progress and their outcomes. So there's 18 total items and each are scored one through seven with a score of one, um, indicating that the patient retire, requires total assistance for a task. And then a score up to seven, which denotes a patient's completely independent with performing an activity. And a patient's total FIM score can actually be subdivided into two groups. Uh, the motor FIM score made up of 13 items um, based on mobility, transfers, ADL, self-care, etc. And then their cognitive FIM score, which is, a ma which is made up of um, only five items. And it was these cognitive FIM scores that we specifically looked at in this review. So just briefly, the cognitive FIM score is made up of five categories. Um, they are comprehension, expression, social interaction, problem solving, and memory. And there's a min of one and a max of five points given for each of these categories. So the lowest possible cognitive FIM score a patient could have would be a five, and the highest would be 35, which would be, which is the cutoff for uh, normal cognition. And again, we only looked at these cognitive FIM scores. So um, moving on to outcomes. As far as our overall functional outcomes, uh, the mean total cognitive FIM score at admission to RHI was 26.66 um, with the standard deviation of 5.7. The 
mean total cognitive FIM score at discharge was 30.15 with a standard deviation of 4.68. And again, the mean total um, cognitive or the total cognitive FIM change is calculated by subtracting the admission FIM score from the discharge FIM score. And that number was um, on average three point, the mean was 3.49. And then this, this total cognitive FIM efficiency score that I mentioned previously calculated from dividing the FIM change by the duration of stay in days was 0.27. And um, one sample t-tests uh, were done on each of these categories and did find statistically significant changes. And again, these are the equations I mentioned previously for FIM change and FIM efficiency. So looking at the FIM scores for each category, um, I, I won't read out each table, um, but I will uh, summarize the cognitive FIM change that was calculated for each of these subcategories. And we did see a statistically significant increase in all subcategory scores by discharge, which is evidenced by this positive um, cognitive FIM change for each of these categories. So looking at duration of stay and discharge disposition, um, our average length of stay for these patients was around two weeks and the majority of patients were able to be discharged home. Four patients did require a skilled nursing facility level of care um, on discharge, and two actually had to be returned to acute care for medical issues. So to kind of summarize uh, some of the outcomes that I listed in table form, uh, we did see statistically significant improvements in the total cognitive FIM scores um, for this patient population, as well as statistically significant improvements in each of the five cognitive subgroups or the patients in this study. And the largest positive gains were seen in the problem solving category, followed closely by scores on memory testing. And as I said, fortunately, a majority of these patients were able to be discharged home. And I, I did not mention this previously, but um, each patient's length of stay um, was compared to their overall cognitive FIM change following rehab. This was done through a simple linear regression and a positive correlation, um, weakly positive correlation was found between the magnitude of a patient's FIM score change and their length of stay. Not surprising, the longer they were in rehab, the um, was weakly correlated with their improvements in cognition. So let's discuss some limitations. Um, in, in the study design, there, there were only 133 patients involved in the study, so relatively small sample size. And in our review, there was no control group. It was simply a retrospective review. Um, so we can't really infer any causative relationships uh, from our results. And the results from this study um, are of a somewhat limited scope. They reflect the rehab and care practices of RHI. Uh, so any conclusions we do make can't really, or may not be able to extend to other units in other parts of the country, parts of the world. Um, so further limitations, there's with the absence of a control group, you always run the risk of potential confounding factors, confounding factors that could be affecting your data. 
um, such as you know the role that certain medical comorbidities can play in their uh, cognitive functioning and their progress in therapies, um, any complications they experience during hospitalization, length of stay in the hospital, ICU versus non-ICU care. Um, also, potentially any associated um, encephalopathy or seizures, which a few of, uh, of patients included in our study did have either um, reported delirium and or seizures during their hospitalization. Uh, neither were excluded neuro conditions. So that could potentially be contributing to, very likely contributing to any residual confusion and then subsequently decreased cognitive functional scores on admission to rehab. So it's possible. We know that encephalopathy is not uncommon in hospitalized patients and especially those with severe illness such as ARDS, which is a condition that's not necessarily unique to COVID. Um, so just some food for thought, uh, future studies. And also the, the measurement tool that we used, uh, FEM scores, uh, does have its own limitations. Uh, depending on who's doing the evaluation, it can underestimate or even overestimate a patient's abilities. Even so, it's a widely accepted tool in rehab settings. And also important as a limitation, as we know, statistical significance is not the same as clinical significance. So yes, we saw a statistically significant improvement in cognitive FIM scores. Uh, this, the average number was an improvement in 3.449. So does this translate to legitimate clinical improvements uh, compared to a patient who say doesn't get acute rehab or um, is discharged instead to a skilled nursing facility? Um, so again, this, this could be better elucidated by doing, um, bigger, bigger studies with control groups, but despite these limitations, our results really are congruent with the data from similar studies. So in conclusion, based on our focused retrospective assessment, patients who participated in a multidisciplinary intensive inpatient rehab program at RHI following recent COVID infection did experience um, statistically significant improvements in their cognitive functioning by the time of discharge, and most were able to be discharged home. So why does this matter? How does this contribute? to the literature. So to our knowledge, this was the first study of its kind to discuss cognitive FEM scores in the post-COVID patient population. And given our knowledge of this complex clinical and functional deficits that we see in COVID survivors, um, this study helps to further highlight this need for comprehensive and multidisciplinary approaches in treating these often complex patients. Um, so this review and a lot of other studies um, do add to the growing literature that is stressing the importance of some form of rehab to facilitate functional recovery in these patients and also facilitate a safe discharge home. And for many of us in the rehab field, um, a full recovery pertains to not just managing these symptoms, but also helping our patients regain functioning and maximizing their quality of life. So a uh, pretty uh, high priority uh, for, for us in this field. Now, acknowledgements really quick, could not have done this without, uh, support of RHI, um, some funding that allowed our wonderful medical student, Megan Willoughby, to help out 
so much. Uh, we used REDCap to collect, manage our um, private patient information. And then statistical analyses uh, were done with the help from IU's School of Medicine Stats Department. Here are my references. Avail any specific references available upon request. And I um, thank you all for your time and attention. Have a good rest of your day.